Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Director Watch, an awards watch podcast that attempts to get inside the mind of cinema's greatest auteurs, explore what drives them, and maybe we go on a few unrelated tangents along the way. I'm Ryan McQuaid, the executive editor here at Awards Watch, and joining me as always is my good buddy and co host, Jay Ledbetter. And today we're covering, weirdly, a commercial for Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's the shortest film we've covered so far, but uh, I, I think there's a lot to dig into. So that, that'll be a lot of fun. Jay, again, I, I, we did this two episodes ago, and I, I don't think you're right on yeah. that one, buddy. Yeah. I don't know. I think I, we're, I mean, this movie does feature chicken, but I don't think anyway it would be a, like a commercial value. Like you could not show this to children. Okay. Um, we're, we're reviewing killer Joe today. Oh, the, oh, that's, it, that treats KFC in a very different way. Yeah. Fortunately, I, I did watch that this week as well. To be fair. I do not think, um, in the, it would be a commercial playing during the Oscars or the Super Bowl or something like that. That's no, that's fair. That's not an inventive million dollar, uh, ad agency way. Say what of, this movie to- certainly doesn't fe- feature Colonel Blanders because oh, this sure. thing is very exciting and, and, and interesting and subversive. So Colonel Blanders, nowhere to be found. What Colonel, Colonel Blanders? Colonel, like bland, like boring. Oh, okay. All right. I see what you're, you're really starting off strong on this episode. Yeah, this is going to be our best episode ever. It's our penultimate episode of the William freaking movie, crazy. movie series. It's crazy. I mean, we've done this. This is the longest one, right? This yeah. is 11 freakins. Yeah. PTA was nine. Denis was like seven, eight. Something, something like that. Something like that. So yeah. A lot of freakins. And the weird well, thing is we're not even covering half of his movies. No. 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 Yeah. No, well, I mean, we have covered all of his we, movies. We've given them the, you know, the, the, the mini reviews. Yeah. But, By the but, way, uh, speaking of things, of all, all of his other movies, was there anything between uh, Killer Joe and Bug or was it in, or that I know? No, of, or? Th- those were those were back to back. That's what I figured. Yeah. There wasn't like a direct to video. Kind of thing. You know what? No, you, know, you know, you know, uh, somebody that we're going to do a series on down the road. I just know it deep in my bones. We're going to do a Paul Schrader series down the road. Um, I can't wait till we get to the part of that series when we have to do the direct to video Nicolas Cage movie that he did. Remember, you know what I'm talking about? The one that was never officially released. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I do know what you're talking about. The one that he like edited at home that never yeah. actually came out. Yeah. Yeah. We got to We got to do that one. I feel like if if we ever did Trader, that would be. You know what? I bet we could actually get. I I think there's a twenty percent chance we could actually get Paul Schrader on our podcast. You really think so? I think a twenty percent chance. I'll give you a twenty. Just message him on Facebook. I do a twenty one percent chance. You just think so? you're the, taking I'm, it over? I'm just gonna price this right your ass. And okay. uh, and I th- I think what well, you know. Actual retail value is probably 0%, uh, but, you know, who knows? Um, But we're here to talk about Killer Joe, 2011 film. Man, this movie's already 10 years old. That's crazy. Well over Um, 10 years old. Well over 10 years old. Little uh, little movie, uh, like a southern gothic crime noir. He did like a too normal. Yeah, it's just crazy that he did such a normal movie. Yeah, he's been making normal movies with Tracy Letts for yeah. all that's all right. You know what I mean? He's 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 working with Letts here again. We so talked about- funny that Tracy Letts is so weird, but gives off such like a fatherly energy in movies. Well, we know him as like the dad in Lady Bird and like Gary Coon's husband. He seems like a super nice guy. Yeah. And then you see Bug and you see this and you go, dude's kind of twisted um you know carrie like, what's going on do you need help Blink well twice. that's why she fell in love with them she fell in love with uh, him because he's a writer on the stage and she came from the stage yeah you know what i mean but um he's working with freaking here he's got McC- matthew mcconaughey emil hirsch juno temple gina gershon thomas hayden church and this movie of course is uh when a debt puts a young man's life in danger he turns to putting a hit out on his evil mother in order to collect the insurance and uh, the person that he hires is a, a crooked cop that is a killer on the side and his name is killer joe jay this is um 
this is a an interesting film to talk about as for sure um mm-hmm. but i also want to say that this is this is a this is kind of an important movie this is what a lot of people um this is i think when a lot of the resurgence and the re um reestablishment of their love for freaking started maybe a little bit during bug but definitely in 2011 when this movie came out because this movie came out it was a conversation piece and i don't know a lot of cinephiles had it in their top 20s of the year uh and it was it was a movie that was like oh that's right william freaking is one of those is back and he's one of those great directors he's making this at like 75 you know, it's a, it's he's, he's seventy five years old making this movie, which and it's, is crazy, it, and it's a less than ten million dollar budget, and he is swinging for the fences. God bless him, and he's making this mean, nasty little movie. So Jay, let's just get right into it, buddy. Let's talk about Killer Joe. Had you seen this one before? I had seen this one before, and I didn't really care for it much. Okay. Um, I found it to be kind of cheap looking and overly melodramatic for my taste. But I will say on this, um, on this second watch, and this was only the second time I've seen it, I I liked it significantly more. And part of that might be due to watching all of these freaking movies in a row and just kind of figuring out where this film lies in the context of his career because this is definitely one of the better films of his career um, post to live and die in LA. I think for sure to live and um, die in LA. Sorry. Every time you, every time you say love it, that I, movie, I, I mean, got rocks. Sing. That movie rocks, right? I got to sing the song. I've been singing the song for weeks. Does that movie just like every time you sing that song, it gets better. Like the movie does not just the song, but um, it's a, uh, I, I, I like this movie a lot. Uh, I, I don't love it. I still have some reservations but it has this real visceral power to it that I certainly do respect. The Dottie character is the thing that I can't totally buy into because she has this kind of angelic uh, kind of quality to her that I can't, that, that turns her into more of a device than a character. But there is a whole lot to think about with this movie and Tracy Letts, from a screenplay perspective just brings a lot to the table thematically and McConaughey, Matthew McConaughey is unbelievable in this movie. He is, uh, he's really remarkable. There's a really fascinating alternative casting the first choice to um, be cast as killer Joe in this movie. But I think they kind of landed on the best option with McConaughey. Okay. Well, you can't just drop that. You want to talk about it now? Yeah, I want to talk about it now. You're going to drop that and say that, like, okay, they landed on McConaughey, but who was it supposed to be? Do you have, can you give, like, a, I don't know, anybody. Who's, who's like, the pre-McConaughey McConaughey? Oh, wow. Well, what do you mean by that? Who's a super charming, good-looking guy hmm. who could star in a rom-com or an action movie? He's a good bit older than McConaughey. Hmm. He's got a great head of hair. It's kind of like Kurt Russell. Yes. Oh shit! All right, you nailed it. <laughs> I was Kurt thinking Russell. like, mm, man, he would have been really good. He would have been really good. Friedkin originally thought of this character as significantly older than McConaughey, and Kurt yeah. Russell was like, "I'd love to do this," and apparently. Goldie Hawn said, "You're not allowed to do this," according to Kurt Russell. That's that's what Kurt. I Russell feel did. also too like this character almost like feels like he played and not necessarily the same version, but I mean he kind of played this sort of sinister character, bad guy, um, in like in like Death Proof. Not that like, like that's a better movie, but was Death Proof before this? What was Death Proof like? Two thousand seven. Seven. I was gonna say eight. Yeah, two thousand seven, two thousand eight. So it yeah. would have been a few years before this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, like that kind of makes sense. But I think the, yeah, the age, the age difference might have been a little bit. That it it extends it even further, and the age. Yeah, it's thing already it's is, already is enough super in this interesting. Yeah, it's already enough in this movie. I mean, we talked about between this and Licorice Pizza, we've got a lot of uh, yeah. Age we still, gap, and we still uh, got a, a a in the 
discourse up. to sort through yeah and then we still got a, a may december podcast we got to do sometime this year so, you know, <laughs> we're really just knocking out the trifectas of age gaps it's what the people want and it's honestly what they deserve um but the but, thing about the we'll we'll talk about the dotty character and that is one of the most important things about kind of the transgression of this movie it's kind of hard kind of, not to talk about this he's character. kind of faking that problematic element in the movie it's it's very I know it's being saying. coded differently than it is in reality but that's yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know there's a lot to talk about there but yeah. kurt russell was the first choice um for killer joe which i think i don't know kurt kurt russell is good every time so it would have been good but there's never a, is never a bad moment in this movie yeah. yeah there's never a bad moment to have kurt russell in your movie even those santa claus yeah. movies oh man christmas chronicles one Oh fuck! Here we go. Amazing! In you, you want me to go on a Christmas Chronicles rant? I was, I was seeing uh, rules. In Christmas at one Chronicles. point, I knew this was going to come up in the show. I just thought we'd wait for like a Carpenter series, but I knew that you would bring up um, the Christmas Chronicles. My fucking, adoration of Christmas Chronicles. You fucking love those movies. I love one. I don't love two. Uh, and love is also strong. I, I, I think it is. I don't know. I think you. I think when you say you love something dude i've known you long enough to know that was my that was love my gut love. call all right so maybe i do love it yeah like yeah I was know. you shot straight from the hip on that one and, i did and it, don't try to walk it back you know christmas chronicles is good <laughs> well goldie shows up at the end of that right or she, she does she is mrs yeah. claus at the end of christmas chronicles. she's more involved and in she's the, a bigger part of in christmas the chronicles too it's is not it, that good christmas chronicles always felt like it was just discount or rip off the santa claus well i mean it it is to a certain extent and they also have kind of a discount minions thing going on oh with the elves yeah the elves sort of have this like gibberish language Mm. uh, that is very much going for a minions vibe it's directed by chris columbus oh harry potter guy harry potter one guy well he did you know home alone well he did harry potter two no he did harry potter one and Harry Potter too. He did, did he two as well. He did two. Who is the Secrets. worst Harry Potter? Uh, no shit. But it's like the worst. I mean, he did Home Alone. He did. He, he did all kinds of stuff. Did he do Percy Jackson? I don't know. He's got his whole production company called 1492 because his name is Chris Columbus. Fuck God. Which is, <laughs> which is a very embarrassing name for a production company, in my opinion. But I wanted to just throw myself off a bridge when you just said that. Actually, did he? Pro- he might have just produced one and directed two, which is the worst one. Let me see. But I'm, look- is- I'm, I- I'm looking it up. I see him feverishly typing on his computer. No, man, he did the first one. He did the first one, not the second one. Okay, we're doing this. You ready? Okay, we're going down the Chris Columbus rabbit hole on our. Okay. Killer Joe episode. <laughs> <laughs> so his first his his directorial feature is Avengers and Babysitting. Uh huh. And then he does a movie called Heartbreak Hotel. He was supposed to direct Christmas Vacation, but hated Chevy so much that he bailed. Yes, he also wrote Gremlins and Goonies before this, so he's a very integral <sighs> part of culture. Gremlins rules. Yes, Goonies. Not a fan. Um, not, not does no. not rule. No, it's not a good. Um, he does. Home Alone, yes. Only the Lonely, which is a John Candy. Um, I don't uh, know that one movie. He does Home Alone too. Yep, Lost in the Big City. Money, big bucks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he does then Mrs. Doubtfire. Hello. Hello. He does Nine Months, which is a the Hugh Grant Julianne Moore movie. Yep. Yep. Stepmom, remember Stepmom? Vaguely. Vaguely. He does. Oh, Jay. He did Bicentennial Man. I mean, of course he did. That I fucking, did. I knew fucking that course. he made Bicentennial Man. Bicentennial Man is one of the most unhinged movies I've ever seen in my life. Like That was unhinged Robin Williams era. Yeah, and that just, and Jack. Oh, what's the one? Um, what's the one where 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 like it's with him and Cuba Gooding Jr. It's like he's dead, the dreams place or whatever. Oh my god. You know what I'm talking about? I do know what you're talking about, but I can't remember the name of it. God, now I gotta look <laughs> I gotta look that up. Shit. Um oh god. What is that movie? Jay, you're not helping. What a good podcast we have. We have the best podcast in America. Uh the, where dreams may come. What dreams may come? 
Yes. He, he guy came out the year before Bicentennial Man. It was right in that same era as haven't Patch. seen it, but I do know of it. I was in the same year as Patch Adams. Yeah, that was Patch Adams year, which is another demented movie. God damn. Yeah. You know, what's crazy is he follows up Goodwill Hunting, which he won the Oscar in 97 for mm-hmm. with What Dreams May Come, Patch Adams mm-hmm. and then Bicentennial Man. Takes a couple years off, has like a voice role cameo. Oh, Death and, to Smoochie has got to be around there somewhere. No, hang on. He does uh, like a cameo in AI. And then he does the year of Insomnia, One Hour Photo, and Death to Smoochie. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. In fucking sane. But anyway. That's back- a crazy run for the guy who was five years earlier the biggest movie star in the world. Anyway, back to Chris Columbus. Yes, so he does Columbus, the he does of course, before he we does get to Killer Joe, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. He does the Chamber of Secrets. Uh-huh. He makes like billions of dollars. Yep. Then he does the musical Rent. Did oh, he, did he direct that? Rent? I yes, didn't know he that. Did. Yes, he did. I didn't remember that. Anyway, he did. Then he does I Love You, Beth Cooper, which was like yes. that popular book that then they made a terrible movie out of. Turned into the most celebrated film of its year. Yeah. And then Percy Jackson and the Olympians, the lightning thief, the first mm-hmm. book yep. uh, starts off that franchise. And then they he were produced, trying to recreate Harry Potter. Exactly. He's trying to like capture the magic because he was one of the mm-hmm. big producers on the, fir- on the first Harry Potters and getting that all done and everything. Uh, 25- he takes five years off after lightning thief does pixels with Adam yes, Sandler. He did do pixels. That's right. And then he did Christmas Chronicles two, where he, Produce, wrote, and directed it. Yeah, he didn't direct one, right? No, he did not. No, he yeah, did that's not. what I said. Oh, I thought you were talking about Harry fucking. Pa- no, I thought you no, were talking no, about no. Percy Jackson. Christmas Chronicles. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no he, he did he not pro- direct the first Christmas Chronicles. No, he produced the first he one. He directed the second Christmas Chronicles. Correct, and he wrote it. Yes, bad. Yeah, he wrote it with the guy that wrote the first, the first one. He like got he got his hands way too in the cookie jar on that one. Kurt, anyway. Kurt Russell rules in those movies. Yeah. Anyway, my wife uh, to this day calls him Hot Santa. I mean, it's just yeah, sure. Um, but anyway, Kurt Russell, Killer- one of the hottest men who has ever lived. Yes. Okay. Uh, correct. So, Killer Joe. Anyway, you, Killer th- Joe. What do you think of this movie? <laughs> so this movie, yeah. When I when when I first saw it, I was I was kind of. A little apathetic to it I, I i thought it just didn't really have the goods but i will say the watching it this time kind of in the context of william friedkin's career especially it worked a lot better for me and i think several years removed from it and seeing these quote-unquote plays on film that have come after it this, this certainly has a much more cinematic quality to it, which I really appreciate. And it really is McConaughey that, that totally stands out. And I love the cast in general. And I, I said I had a, a daddy problem a little bit with this film. Another casting what if. You know who begged to have this role? Oh, shit. Begged? Said, I am the only person who can play Dottie. Allegedly, according to William Friedkin. Ooh, wow. Um huge she was she was coming off of an enormous breakthrough at this time. Really? And um, would go on to be one of the biggest movie stars in the world. She's coming off a big breakthrough. Is what yes. you're saying. And then they would she would be she would become one of the biggest stars on the planet? Jennifer Lawrence? Correct. Wow, I'm on fire tonight. You are two for two. She, Holy shit. But it got sort of in. Yeah, that makes sense because she just got nominated for Winner's Bone. Winner's Bone. And, yeah, yeah, and everything. And yeah. and and she was, the, the, the movie kind of got in production limbo and then she got caught up in X-Men. And so she had to pivot. Yeah. So she couldn't be in this. And also, I don't know that she ever exuded the kind of youthful energy that Juno Temple brings to this role for better or worse, maybe depending on your thoughts of the film, but it is certainly provocative. It has uh, sort of this Lolita esque element to it. And it also has 
a, a very, very intense violence to it that I certainly appreciated. It's provocative, not just for the sake of being provocative, but provocative for thematic sake and certainly characters sake. Um, it's a movie I, I like a lot with some reservations is, is what I would say about it. Okay. I hadn't seen it in a while. <sighs> and I rewatched it. And I'm, mm-hmm. you know, people think that Jay and I just agree on everything mm-hmm. because, Hey, listen, we've been, we've been friends for a long time. Uh, We've been doing this for like seven years, buddy. It is weird. We've got this sort of like, I don't know, parallel thinking a little bit. We do. There's some, there's things that we disagree on. Yeah. There's like, you know, certain like levels to things or rankings of stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I've got, I've got issues. I think with more of the first half of the film than I do the second half of the film. I think the second half of the film, when it starts getting going, and it gets when wild. it really becomes a chamber piece, yeah. When it comes to like a chamber piece, I think the last thirty minutes of this movie is fantastic. Um, I think it's messy and wild and dangerous and raw and everything you want to describe it as. And I think it works. And I think it's exactly the movie it's trying to build itself as. Right. I just think that the build up to it, it's 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 a little long. It takes a long time to get there. I wish it was tighter. I wish it was. For, a uh, I mean, it's a pretty short movie. I know it's an hour 40, but I was like, man, this is, you know, uh, this was around the time when I watched The Hunted. And I was like, man, this is. Oh, like, well, <laughs> 10 minutes minute shorter, stuff. totally lean, no wasted. No wasted stuff. Minute. Yeah. Well, I think I don't need to see like the, the hundred thousand time uh, Emil Hirsch get the, his ass kicked, you know, these side characters and things of that nature. And, you know, it takes a well, while. You know what? The, the, the scene where he gets his brains beat in, I'll tell you what. I like the character. I do like that. Me. I do like that one guy being like, no, I like you, but they're going to kick your ass. You know what I mean? Like, I like that. That was Well, the thing, the thing for me was they play that song stroking, yeah. you know, I've been stroking. And it just reminded me of this interview where he said, where, where Friedkin, and I, I hadn't even, I didn't even read it for this, but it was one that I had read a while ago where Friedkin was just like, I think Strokin is one of the great pieces of art that exists in American culture. He, he's just like, it's one of the most entertaining, like greatest pieces of music that's ever been written. And that's all I was thinking about as uh, as I was listening to that scene. So it, it definitely made that pay off for me. Uh, he just loves that song, Stroking. I've been stroking. I stroke it to the east. I stroke it to the west. I stroke it to the women that I love best. I've been stroking. He he, he loved it. He loved it. Um, he loved it, and he put it in this movie. Good for him. He does look like it with a couple of needle drops, actually, in this movie. There's, there's a few needle drops in this um but i i like this is tough this one's tough to talk about because you think this one is tough to talk about i think so i think it's because pretty straightforward i know you're being a smart ass you don't you don't um, have to walk on eggshells with this one at all no <laughs> you don't have to um I think that the, yeah, this movie is probably one of the more complicated movies that we've had to talk about. I think that the, what what's my trepidation on it is that the sort of build up and lead up to it is pretty basic and generic, and then I think that it, it's 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 an interesting concept and, and a great idea. I'm not as sold on Hirsch in this role maybe as you are. I think that I, I that's, think, no, I think, no, I, think, I, I haven't talked about him yet, but I don't, I don't, I don't love him in this. I don't think he, on Hirsch in general. Let's do a Hirsch corner. I don't, oh, um, I just love speed racer, man. He's so good in speed racer. He's good in speed racer. He's good in, in uh, into the wild problematic guy for sure. Do not condone. Apparently he's a, a bad man. Yeah. I, I, did, I don't condone anything that he's done. Um, but I just don't think he's right here. I don't know who would have been right. I don't know if there was somebody else that was in contention. Um, but yeah, I just, uh, yeah, not, not, 
there's something about his performance. It just the way his accent works kind of all over the place a little bit. And um, I just, I don't know. There's something, and he's a beat off from everybody else. It feels like uh, when he's a part of the ensemble, but when he's just opposite McConaughey, like the couple scenes that he's just, it's just him and McConaughey. Like when he tells like McConaughey to kind of back off, it's even worse because McConaughey is operating at a level here. That's uh, like this fucking tornado. Uh, the minute he walks into this movie and just consumes it. And that's the thing. It's like for a movie that's called killer Joe, we spent a lot of time through Chris's perspective. And and then the second, and then the last 30 minutes, we decide to make this a killer Joe movie. We decide to make this a chamber piece. We put it in one location or, you know, everything, the shit has gone crazy. And it, it really does build off of the fact that this is a stage play by the end, you know, and that's where the, the mm-hmm. confinement of all this is. And Jay, that's when this movie becomes extremely compelling. It feels like a powder keg ready to explode. And it feels like the guy that remade 12 Angry Men and, you know, made these last couple of movies over the last couple of years where he's like, I'm going to be in one location and I'm going to dominate. And it feels like, you know what it feels like? I'm going to tell you this and you're going to think I'm crazy. It feels like watching the Super Bowl. Where it feels here, like watching. The hear Super me out. I'm, exi- I'm excited for this one. Because hear me out. Like the first quarter of the Super Bowl mm-hmm. this last year, right? About oh, a month you're ago. You're speaking specifically to this Super this Bowl. Super Bowl. Yeah. First half. It was fine. It was it was okay. It was a little bit boring. Mostly defensive. To again to to time stamp this podcast, we're we're speaking of the Kansas City Chiefs San Francisco Niners Super Bowl from 2024. Yeah, correct. Then the second half starts, third quarter starts getting interesting. There's some twists, there's some turns. Mm-hmm. And then we get to the fourth quarter in overtime. And it makes it an, and it makes it like it makes it up makes for it an all time. It makes up for the first half. It makes up for the experience of the slow ride to get to this Whereas amazing the whole experience is not fully satisfying. Yeah, like but... when you think about when you like go back and watch the highlights or you go back and think about the whole totality of it. It's probably not from start to finish the greatest game you ever watched. But the whole thing is but worth the it. end. The end is just phenomenal. Yeah. And you can't and you, it, you're and on the edge the of your previous seat. Previous boring stuff worth it. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So the ride to get there is is was was what great. Now were there bumps along the ride? Absolutely. And that's where I that's where I stand. I think that this movie's bumpy to get there. But there's interesting things in between the bumps to talk about, right? And there's interesting things in which what Freakin's doing, the performances. But the last 30 minutes of this movie are, I think, absolutely fantastic. And I think that that's what the movie is trying to deliver throughout most of this and trying to be. And when it gets to that point and we finally get to see the this this fucking terrifying creature unleashed that is McConaughey's Killer Joe, I think it's 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 riveting. And 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 it is just the start of the reconnaissance. This is right around that time. Yeah. A, an era of cinema that is one of the best eras of cinema anyone's had in their career. What McConaughey yeah. was doing at this time was delivering banger performance after banger performance working with every single director that had some sort of good reputation or interesting perspective and he would come in with his performance like bernie magic mike this you know and he just even lincoln lawyer which is like again yeah, a you, very, want the, you want the run let's, let's do, do it run. yeah put it up let's go so i've got it here um i mean he was doing all of his rom-com stuff for a while he's got tropic thunder where he's kind of starting to do something kind of interesting yeah but that but it's really the break in between tropic thunder and then the indie stuff it, it's the Lincoln lawyer, weirdly, that I yes. think kind of kicks it off. It's the Lincoln lawyer, Bernie. Yeah. Which I think Bernie was a movie I thought about a lot when I was watching this movie. It's kind of got a similar plot. Uh, it's got a similar um, plot, but, I and like, but it's... I think Bernie's like, better. It's, I, I agree, too. It's top tier link later for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Bernie. Um, and then, But he's phenomenal in that movie, too. Yes. Um, so it's black. He's Jack, got uh, Bernie. He's got this. He's got mud. Mud. Oh, mud's good. He's got Magic Mike, and then of course Dallas Buyers Club. I 
huge film for him. Wolf of he's Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street. He's got Interstellar. Interstellar. And then it kind of starts falling off. Yeah. But that Weirdly. chunk of but that chunk of time. It's so weird that it's right like four after year. that, they're, they're not even they're not even movies that failed. They're just movies that don't exist. Okay, read them off. The Sea of Trees. Is that the Gus Van Sant? Is that Gus? Who, who yes, that, that is Gus yeah. Van Sant about yeah. the Japanese suicide forest. Like forest? Oof. Yeah. Then there's Gold. Who directed that one? Uh, Stephen Gagan. Director yeah. of Syriana and Doolittle. Oh, Gagan. Gagan. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, he has the same birthday as my brother and sister. Wow. Your Something brother and sister. I just learned. Your brother and sister were born. Were they twins? Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I didn't know. Hey, learn something new every day. Then um, Free State of Jones. That's Yikes. with, that's with, ooh, who directed that one? That's right. That's another. That was Gary Ross. That's Gary Ross who did all the mm-hmm. Hunger Games movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He also made Pleasantville, which like kind of rocks. Yeah, that's a good like Gary Ross, not bad. And then well, Gary Ross did the first. He did the first Hunger, uh, Games. Hunger Games. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then so Kubo, so. which animated whatever doesn't really count. Then The Dark Tower. <laughs> oh, The Dark Tower is a. That's a big miss. That's a big miss. So I mean, this run. Let, let's just look at it, and I'll, I'll do then, the next. And then two he does. Well. And then he does. I'll do the, the next two as well. We're not even there yet. So let, let's just do this run: the Sea of Trees, Gold, Free State of Jones, Dark Tower, White Boy Rick, Serenity. I was gonna say Serenity. Where's my Where's my favorite Serenity? That is that run is as bad as his previous run is good. Yeah, but you know what it is. He got the Oscar. And then he was just in what? It, it just took whatever he wanted and got paid a lot. I mean, what does he have to prove anymore at that point? I guess. Then he was in the Beach Bum, which rules. Good movie. What else has he been in? The Gentleman. Good movie. Good guy, Richie. I like. I like the Gentleman. I like the Gentleman. Do you know they're making a Gentleman TV show? Uh, no, I did not know that. Theo James is, I guess, playing like the McConaughey part. And then no, thank he you. Doesn't really been in anything because when i think that. of that was, in, that was I, in 2019 when i think of the uh modern day equivalent of matthew mcconaughey i think of theo james the fuck out of here i mean we we all do like no one's thought of theo james ever in the history of ever this is actually kind of crazy he hasn't been in a movie since 2019 well yeah he's become like the minister of culture at the university of texas and he's become yeah, like he's become a motivational a speaker in like political a, socio-political political, figure yeah he's got like the green the what is it the the green light book or whatever the shit he's got like he's it's weird yeah he's he's become a caricature almost of himself like everything you know like when snl made fun of him and like jim carrey did the impression he's be, he's leaned into that hard and um but again what does he have That's to bizarre. prove? Is he not done it? Is he not done a like an HBO show or anything? Well, he? I mean, he did do True Detective in that run, also that you didn't mention. True in the, in the good McConaughey run, it was Dallas Buyers Club, True Detective, and then Interstellar. So yeah, forgot about that. And Mud and this yeah. and yeah, all those good stuff yeah. and True Detective, which is still one of the single greatest television experiences seasons of television yeah that, i mean yeah. i haven't watched the new season but um but like, i haven't watched anything since uh season two actually oh with the colin farrell and the, yeah, the when it tried colin to be farrell like uh beats Vince up Vaughn. kid's dad <laughs> yeah. yeah where it tried to be like almost like nick pizzolato doing the wire and it just wasn't good yeah because nobody can do the wire he's done sing two He's in the Sing movies. He's made it probably yeah. a shit ton of money off of those. He's probably made half of his net worth. I'm telling you, movies. you know what? Steve Carell doesn't have to work a fucking day in his life anymore because he's got The Office and he's got The Despicable, Despicable Me. Movie. We got yeah. Despicable Me 4 coming this year. What do you think of the Despicable Me movies? Cute. I don't think they're that bad. Yeah, they're cute. Disposable fun. Exactly. Yeah. The third one is like kind of interesting because... The bad guy in that movie is a character who is trying to hold on to nostalgia, which is kind of an interesting enemy to have in a 
movie. Isn't it kind of interesting when these when these like or whatever that, no. yeah when like these no. studios it was played by um, Trey Parker I believe yeah South Park which is, which is funny because like he's he's got like the most quote unquote hanging on to nostalgia show of all time in South Park. Um, I don't know because it seems like so, that seems show seems like like The Simpsons where they're they're a relic of the past. That show has been on for so long. Yeah. At the, you but know. you know what sh- show has been on for so long? Hmm. Freaking Always Sunny. It's still good. But it's still good. Still good. It's because the, because Five Assholes is always funny. I've been watching. Uh, I, I was just. I, w- I was doing a Sunny rewatch, and I hadn't seen the last few seasons, and it's still good. Oh, it's very still good. good. Very very good. Yeah. Anyways, Killer Joe. Uh, good. Do you think? Do you think Jennifer Lawrence would have worked as Dottie? at that time she would have been 20 or 21 i think at that time yeah that would have been i think she always had a hard edge to her that wouldn't have worked you know what have been problem yeah i would i see the thing about Dottie, and this is this is the thing of the character she's coded as 12 yeah she's well she's coded as someone that can't stand up for herself and is she's a she's a paper doll you know what I mean? She's just kind of, she's just like this, this. She's very much coded as underage, correct? Do you agree with me there? She's coded. Even either, though she's not. If she's not underage, she's coded as uh, mo- like not just underage, but obviously with maybe a, a form of a disability. Well, or, it, it is implied you know, at one yeah. point that she has it because her mother hold her un- uh, held her under a pillow when she was very young. Yeah, it's it's almost as if like like she's, limited her brain development. It's a yeah, it's a real, it's a real stage. It's tricky. This it's is a, a tricky, it's a real stage movie, way of Ryan. explaining something. Yeah, it's it's kind of. I mean, it's kind of a little bit. It's no more stage than poor things. No. Right? Yeah. Well, no. What I meant is like that's like a that doesn't. Well, that's maybe a that's, fantasy though. Yeah. Well, that I mean, like maybe that could like you can get away on a stage with like just a drive by note. And then like, Oh yeah, she yeah. held the pillow under her head. But like in a movie where I can stop it and I can go, wait a minute, what the fuck was the dialogue that you just said out of your mouth? Like, you know what I mean? It's it, I don't know. It just seems like a really, it seems like an easy excuse that probably these characters have, have gotten used to, but then again, all these characters are simple minded and and a little dumb in a lot in one hand. way or another. Yeah, yeah, these these aren't the most brightest bulbs in the shed. Um, but she's definitely to a, coded, to a fault, I would argue. She's coded but, yeah. as the most, I think, innocent and moldable and uh, easily yes. corrupted of the group. That is very much the case for her character. Yes. Do I think Jennifer Lawrence could do this? Hell, fucking no. Because at this no. time, if you watch, it would be. Honestly, the whole thing was that she was hardened. That's why Winter's Bone and the performance in that, yeah, you buy that performance because she's has to be tough. In that's that. why she could play thirty in the David O. Russell movies. Yeah, that's why. She, yeah, she's like twenty two or whatever when in Silver Linings, and she's supposed to be like a thirty three year old or something yeah. like that. And you buy it because she seems way more mature for her age. That was always her thing. Yeah. yeah, that's her. That is her thing. You know what I mean? She's, she's. Where are you at on her in uh, the David O. Russell movies? I mean, she's got she got significantly worse as they went along. I think she's very good in Silver Linings. I think she's good in that. I don't dislike her in uh, Hustle, but I think that that American movie. Hustle. I think that I like basically that is such a weird movie because I like basically every performance in that movie. Yeah. And Amy Adams in that film is Woo! very important to me. I was just gonna say, very important to you. And then, um, uh, and then Joy exists. But the thing is, apparently, Amy Adams was like devastated by her experience on that movie, which I hate. Well, Amy Adams needs to just make good movies and good choices. Yeah, Amy she Adams was stop doing f- it. She was my favorite performer in the world for like three years. Yeah. But I, but no, I think I think kind of Juno Temple. I think it's the right choice. I do, I do. I think Thomas Hayden Church is a perfect choice. I love and, Thomas Hayden Church, Church is in the 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 J Hall of Fame. 
yeah of he's, like people i like i think he's great as ansel because like ansel people i think like when he goes to get the check right and he rip his shirt like he just untangles like his sleeve or yeah. whatever nobody can play sad sack of like, shit better well, he's than got him. he's got like yeah like the safety pin sleeves on yes. his suit so good it's it's so good and gershon is great opposite him it's just she's awesome gina gershon is she's awesome yeah she's she should she's a fucking legend she should be in everything she's great in this um but to go back to mcconaughey he the this movie's this movie's good like like this movie like this movie's good but he excels it to god i gotta watch killer joe because his performance in this movie is is electric. It's kind of undeniable. Yeah. Yeah. And what's so great about this era, the reconnaissance, as it's called, and every actor since has tried to that like had a bad run or whatever. Like Amy Adams needs a reconnaissance bad because so bad. I hope so that bad. next movie of hers is uh is that. Oh wait, uh, Night Bitch. Yeah. yeah. Mary Mary Heller. Yeah, the Mario Heller one. That's a good that. director to work with, to be fair. It does That's seem... That's a pretty that good I, fucking I person so. to work with. Because the last one... Was the last movie she was in the Dear Evan Hansen? Fuck, what was the last thing she was in? I think it was Dear Evan Hansen. Well, was that the same year as... Um, Hillbilly Elegy? Well, that was the year before, right? And then the... Woman in the Window? The, woman in the Window. <laughs> She's been on a cold streak. She's been, but she's been like a way. Anyway, any way you slice it up, she's been on a cold streak. Yeah, but she, well, in between all that, she did do Sharp Objects, which is a phenomenal show. Sharp Objects rocks. Well, she I did. Agree. She did the um, the Enchanted sequel, D- Disenchanted. She. Oh yeah, God, that was bad. <laughs> and I, I really like Enchanted, but just Disenchanted was. Wait, bad. I'm sorry. She did. She did. Damn, Sharp Objects is a while ago. She did that in 2018. Oh, the same year she did vice so like god that was six years her ago. run right now is hillbilly elegy oh boy. the snyder cut the woman in the window dear evan hansen and disenchanted Oof, that has, is that is brutal she has a uh, night bitch coming up she has uh kings of america which is like which is a a a mini series about the cre about the people that uh that that were in charge of Walmart. Sure. Um she's got the invite, which is um Dayton and Ferris directed that. Um those are the those are the guys that did if I'm not mistaken, hang on. Yeah, they did like Little Miss Sunshine, Battle of the Sexes, Ruby Sparks. Um so and that that's written by Rashida Jones, which could be interesting. And it's her and Tessa Thompson and Paul Rudd. So that could be interesting. Um, it looks like, like a romantic comedy. Um, and then she's got Clara in the sun, which is the Taika Waititi film. Well, Taika's on a heater. Taika's on a heater of bad movies, um, but that movie would be with her and Jenna Ortega. We have not talked enough about how next goal wins was just buried. They they didn't want to talk about it, did they? No, nobody did. Nobody did. Nobody. Went. They said next goal wins, not this goal. I'll tell you that. I'm a movie. That movie. That movie's history is fascinating from the standpoint that movie was made like five or six years ago. Yeah, and they just kept delaying and delaying and delaying. Then they finally released it at TIFF. It had a pretty decent reception over, over there. Uh, though no, I, I'll tell you one thing. It stinks. And it, No, it sucked. I was like, I was sitting at that premiere going like, I hate myself and, and watching this movie. And then it barely had a, any of it a had rollout. Like no theatrical release. And then I thought, oh, well, it'll go, to, it'll go on Hulu. Never on Hulu. You have to rent it. No, you have like to 20 go. bucks iTunes or whatever, yeah, yeah for like seventeen ninety nine, twenty, you know, like nineteen ninety. Yeah. Anyway, no, what I, I just the minute McConaughey walks into this movie, it's a completely different picture at that point. But the oh, problem sure. is, but yeah. the problem is, like, he comes in at parts, and then and then he's entangled in it, and then he and then there's a chunk of the movie 
where he disappears a little bit. And I feel like he's such a fascinating character. And the rules then kind of don't work for him nearly as much. Like we don't see an, enough of him at work or enough of like his shady background or, you know, I mean, him doing that stuff is purposefully left out. Yeah. I, I think effectively. And I don't know. I just felt like because of budget, but I mean, fair, but I'm also sitting there going like, God damn it. The most interesting character is off screen. And then the final yeah. 30 minutes of the movie when they have to, when he has to get his money and he's playing, like he's doing uh Kentucky fried, uh, evil Benoit Blanc at the end. Hey, and C. A, yeah. And he's, he's, he's putting all the pieces together in the most deranged way. I'm like, okay, now I would understand why you don't want to fuck with this guy or you don't want to hire him because he's in, he's in a madman, but it takes a while to kind of get there. And, um, and I think that the, the problem is, it's like you have to go along with the ride with Emil Hirsch for most of that when he's not, when McConaughey is not there and he's not good enough to carry it, but it doesn't, der- but it doesn't the... derail the film no, no, overall, no. but it just, it just, is like, it's like, okay, like, I know where I know where I got to get with this point, but yeah. I know I know, but I know something good's coming, and I think and when it does come, man, it's oh, it's so fucking good, and in, and but it's also just like a cavalcade of like, of course I expect these idiots to fall apart because these guys are not these guys aren't smart, yeah. these guys are dumb. I think the Emil Hirsch is like a net neutral for me, where he's fine the the dotty stuff she's so angelic at points where she becomes just like a metaphor rather than a character which mm-hmm. i think is detrimental to the movie do you what do you what do you think of dotty i i think she is the real hinge point of the movie cuz i think mcconaughey is undeniable a lot of the other stuff is dressing and then Dottie is sort of weirdly the thematic core of the movie. It's so, it's so interesting because like, it seems as if like she, she has fallen. I mean, like the, the point of all of this is like Dottie's caught in the middle of these, of these, of the, of all of it, because she's the retainer, right? She's the retainer. Right. Which is a very dark, just idea in general. Yeah, the the idea of yeah. you having to use your sister and essentially like, and then there's so many incestuous implications with that dream he has when she has the robe on. It, it's 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 there's so much. It, it's it's. I think Freakin was going hard in the paint with. This he really one. was. He was like, well, and then there's this this. I mean, you talk about it, but it, there is this possession of like. There's a, something more within just the relationship. It feels like at times with Dottie and Chris and not just dreams, but yeah, like literally exactly. it becomes about like when the end of this film starts coming, it is about like the possession of like, he can run away. He doesn't need Dottie to run away with him, but he is, but he you know what I mean? demands Dottie come with him. Yeah. yeah. And, and then there's the tug of war for the two of them before she explodes. Yeah. And, and the final shot of the movie, which is like, the final yeah by the end of this movie it it does essentially put it in the 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 audience's hands that everything has been and always will be controlled by Dottie. Dottie is in control she is in control finally after essentially this family has used everybody in this family has used her for the idea of this murder plot the guy that's supposed to come in that she is attracted to and drawn to like a moth to a flame almost very similar to like Cape Fear, right? It has very Cape Fear vibes to it. Mm-hmm. Um, is what I was thinking about when I was watching the the interaction, the first interactions, and a lot of like their the the just like the the kind of like the lurking of a devil and coming to the like dark side of yes. what Joe can do. Um, you know, by the by the end of the film, it is suggesting that she has she has overcome that and is tired. Uh, and has blown up to this point and, and, and everything because she's, she is tired of being the pawn in the game and being the, the, the chess piece that is now stuck in the middle of the board 
that both people want to move. And so I do find her, while it is it is very much this character that is that is uh very icky is the i think the right word in 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 the way it's presented pixie hillbilly dream girl yes but i do think that by the end there is a there there is a lot of control given back to her and 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 i and she's the only one really by the end of the film that is left unscathed by the whole incident outside of obviously her mother dying but um you know chris is chris is shot right and mm-hmm. um or he's beat to shit gina gershon's been you know having she had the the chicken um incident uh, which i i would we're gonna have to talk about that and um oh, and the then, drumstick yeah dilemma yeah when you, when you talk about that the the thing that all the marketing was <laughs> hinged upon i mean and then you know her father's shot as well i mean like the, everybody is essentially like it is in her hand and and it's because she, she because ends up being the master yeah. she ends up yeah like honestly yeah in a weird way yeah she ends up becoming because like and is she reliable enough to suggest that like when she says that she is pregnant is she actually pregnant or is it to cause him like to see well, if what a, his reaction a whole would be? bunch of unreliable you got an unreliable narrator yeah, yeah, and then she's and she's relied on him, and they've broken that trust. It's she's a fascinating character to talk about, um, you know. And I think Temple does the the best she can with this character, and I can understand why Jennifer Lawrence. I think the kind of way I've explained it, I can understand now why Jennifer Lawrence would want to play it. There's a lot, there's a lot there, um, really under the on the on and above the, and below the surface on this. I just character. think the character has to be very submissive. Which yeah. I haven't really seen Jennifer Lawrence do. No, I don't think that. No, that's why I think Temple's kind of perfect in this role because she's, yeah. she's, you know, she's. You can see her go through both, and and they're both believable. She's a very, she's very believable, in it, right. and um and yeah, and she's great opposite McConaughey, and um and it's yeah, it's 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 made to make you feel very uncomfortable. And I was very uncomfortable watching their scenes, even though like, you know, you know what I mean? And a, like, and a lot, I mean, a lot of the scenes in general, I mean, the first time we meet Gina Gershon, we see her, you, you see, know, you crotch see, first, you see the forest through the trees. You know yes. I mean? so, uh, yes. 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 Certainly, yes. certainly one way to put it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it is this, this is Friedkin. You know, I've talked about Friedkin being kind of, transgressive just to be transgressive this mm-hmm. film i think the transgression is more effective than it has been many times for him just mm-hmm. because of the characters i think really is what it is yeah. um and you know the those act of violence acts of violence really ring true because of how strong i think the characters are in this film and uh how claustrophobic those final 30 40 minutes of the film are um, I think the tension really, really plays. I mean, it is as tense as some of those car chases that he's done, but it all takes place in a trailer. Yeah. Right. Um, I think that stuff is just really well crafted, really well shot. Um, it feels cinematic in ways that so many of his more compressed films don't. Yeah. Um, I think this is actually one of his better directed movies, in my opinion. No, I think um, it's. I I, yeah. I agree with you. I think it is. It's phenomenal directing, especially that. I'm telling you that last thirty minutes is just because he's on top of everyone, yeah. McConaughey in bomb. that moment. Yeah, and he's, it's a pipe bomb, and he's holding it, and he's shoving it and moving it, and you know, fucking it and whatever. You know, what I mean, he is. He is. He is delivering in that in that in those scenes and i mean obviously he the power dynamics and the totally changed yeah Dottie has all the control at the end but really honestly because of chris's enormous fuck up because of the fact that you know he find the you know find out about the you know the policy but joe knows all this because he's done this many times before chris's arrogance finally catching up to him after like the the boyfriend right um essentially like got chris to do this 
in order to then he could take the policy because he got knew his name was on it, not Dottie. Right. Yeah, that it, that is a good twist. That's a good twist. No, it is. And it's good to see like they all turn on Chris. And mm-hmm. so they kind of lean into, you know, after the funeral, they lean into, you know, like, well, Joe's gonna take care of us. But then it's like, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm I, I want my money. That's what I really want. And if I don't and the I in the the sinister devilish nature is okay, if I'm not getting my money which the check is signed in Rex's name, then I'm taking my retainer. And this, you know, this really, the worst case the, scenario yeah. that's ever happened, you know, like could happen to that family is, but the idea of like, uh, of, of Ansel and, and, and Charlotte, like essentially be like, yeah, it's okay. The because I'm human. And because it's like we can't repay you. In the and way what's so crazy is Dottie seeing or hearing yeah. all this in the other room and all of it unfold. Meanwhile, we're, and almost it's like we're hearing her, you know, her perspective at times in certain shots, but we're definitely seeing everything of how, you know, the, the, the chicken, the chicken scene, the drumstick, the simulation of, of, um, oral, the oral sex, the idea of the, of the, of, of the betrayal that that Charlotte has on this family, but then also Ansel's once again, naivete getting in his way and somebody finally doing something about it. And it's the most dangerous man that they, that they could ever do something. It's, it's a, it is a terrifying sequence and it's, it is, is. it's more terrifying to me than shocking. It's, 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 it's super sadistic and, and, and like, and McConaughey, plays it brilliantly you know what i mean and it's i could only imagine how this plays on stage like i like i was sitting there and i was thinking about like cinematically this is like you're saying jake claustrophobic intense um extremely brutal i can only imagine because this is a stage play how this would have been crafted and, and this how was you would, his first play yeah yeah and so i mean what a what a debut play first performed um, in uh 93 i believe I don't know if uh, if you should lean too much into the chicken aspect uh, in the marketing, but uh, definitely. No, <laughs> it's really it's weird. Honestly, like, honestly, I think that being. I hate when that, movies do that. I don't know if you if you hate that or not when movies. Oh, I hate. I mean, like, in in it, it's kind of a case by case thing, but the fried chicken being the main aspect of the marketing for this movie, I think is that's silly. Deep and yeah, silly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it's it's stupid. And that sequence, I think, is shocking in an effective way. Um, and I think it, you know, this is a guy from Chicago making a movie about Texas where you can kind of make these leaps of cultural insensitivity that I don't think are totally uh, derogatory in any way. It's just sort of, again, there's a lot of shorthand in this movie. And I think there's a lot of shorthand in many of these later Friedkin films where he's not making these two and a half hour movies anymore. He's making an hour 30 an hour 40 where efficiency is kind of the name of the game. And if you want to have sort of the ultimate hook to your movie, you do something like that. And I think it's effective. And I think McConaughey performs it very well. And I think Gershon really is sort of the underrated uh, piece of this movie for me, where she's so down for all of this. And I think she's sort of been that way her whole career. Gina Gershon is, in my opinion, one of the more underserved, underrated performers of her generation. I, I mean, I just think about Bound. Oh man, she's just. I mean, I know you and I just love Bound. I love Bound. I know. Jo- I know our our buddy at the at Awards Watch, uh, Josh Parham. It's, I think he said it's his favorite Wachowski film, and it's. I think it's my like it's, second it's, or third favorite. It's, like a, it's a masterpiece. Film. Yeah, it's a masterpiece. Wachowski. I think I think she's job. really good in Showgirls. Yeah, but I'm also a is. huge defender. I mean, I'm I'm not. No. I don't ironically like Showgirls. I think no, Showgirls sh- is sh- actually a good. fascinating movie. Yeah, and there's a lot. Go- really yeah, Jay. Good in it. That yeah. there's a lot going on, especially in that movie. God, Verhoeven would be a good series one of these. Days. And then I also think Showgirls kind of ruined her career. Um. Well, I think it ruined a lot of people's careers. To yes, be fair, to be fair, Jay. I mean, it's not like 
Not like they were like, oh, what's the problem with Shogos? Oh, it's Gina Gershon and only Gina Gershon. Well, yeah, I mean, but but that's <laughs> kind of where Gina Gershon is when she's making this movie where, okay, you're going to be the woman that gets her brains beat in. Um, and I think she does it very effectively, but it's just an interesting place to be. It's uh, brutal. In, in her career. And also this was, you know, Thomas Hayden Church post Spider-Man 3, post Sideways. Uh, sideways where mm. he was like i don't really know where i am at this point and so it's like a couple people trying to figure out who they are and then mcconaughey sort of on the ascent um yeah because honestly Hirsch, right at the end i don't even know what how you describe emil hirsch well temple was, well temple is like a discovery it's like un, un, not no yeah temple is hirsch. temple is sort of this ingenue yeah and then like hirsch is coming off a speed racer which is not particularly like no, you know, it's not, not it was not it was a bomb. When was, it was when a bomb. was um when was into the wild? Oh seven. He does like he does like into the wild, he does like speed racer and then that bombs and then and then it was like this. And then it's like this. So he's sort of is, like a he's just like a working guy, kind of. Well, it's it's like I need to do something and I need to like do something yeah. quick before I get like screwed. You know, when what was I mean? Spider Man three? Oh seven. So that was like the same time as End of the Wild. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that was Thomas. Because 07, 07 had like the summer of threes. I remember that. It was like Rush Hour 3, Pirates yeah. 3, Oceans uh, 13, uh, Spider Man 3. There was, yeah, there was a lot of like threes that year. Because Thomas Aiden Church was really in the wilderness before um, He's you know, like a, Sideways and Spider Man 3. And then Spider Man 3 was derided and then it was kind of like thomas Aiden church well, he back. just went back to being kind of like this which is where he yeah, yeah he was like this he's a character actor he's in there you know for a couple scenes this i like and that, thomas you know. Aiden church, i like man. him a lot too man i like him watching like giamatti have all this success with holdovers i'm like can somebody do that with yeah. Aiden church he would be great to get another run at it um but like no i think like and that's the other thing too. Mac- this is before the mcconaissance Mac- starts he's taking cuts this is sort of the he's first a- piece this is one of the first pieces like right around that time like freaking got them all on a good deal and and and, this movie was made for nothing yes well you know this movie was made for like eight and a half which is which is nothing you know what honestly by these days standards that's like a 20 high budget a24 movie no it really is i mean like get out was made for five million right yeah so like you know and um but okay. that's all act. That's all actors. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Although there are some locations in this movie, there are. But I feel like I feel like you, you know, I feel like you could get away with just. I mean, a little bit might be McConaughey, obviously for sure. McConaughey and, a, and you know, Emil Hirsch coming off of blockbusters, he he might have still been making maybe, a little bit of money. Maybe if they landed the deal before him. But Thomas anyway, Church still making a little bit of that sideways money. Yeah, but I mean, like, I don't know the you, just the way in which you've got to construct this. I don't think it's too big of a of a of a. There's not a lot of. There's a couple of locations. It's mostly shot in this in this like West, yeah, uh, Dallas, like you know, oh, sort of. Yeah, they got the one at the roller coaster. They've got the chase sequence. Yeah, you know what I mean. But most of it there's is not nothing. There's not nothing. No, I'm not saying that there isn't. Um, but you know, it's a pretty subdued. The yeah. tight you know again another tight film he's not making big you know other directors of his generation they're making the 200 million dollar epics he's making these tight little indie budget movies but he's gr- getting just as like much who? Conver- who are his contemporaries that are doing that well his contemporaries at this is point. his contempt i mean at this point i mean marty already- is not doing anything scorsese at yeah i guess this was like around gangs in new york right yeah scorsese's there i mean like um you know lucas had been making the damn well star wars prequel sure um Spiel, you know spielberg is his contemporary spielberg as well, is spielberg he's like yeah i mean like spielberg this year has tintin and warhorse you know what i mean so like there you go but if you um, want to say like the three hugo came, hugo came out this year from scorsese all right like who like did we who did we say <laughs> were the the, the what did we say there were three or four horses of the apocalypse it was friedkin coppola uh, chimino was there another one scorsese i'm forgetting yeah who was score what did scorsese do that was so disastrous his king of comedy was was a big 
Was it? Was that that big of a deal? It was was a big no. I he's talked about this. He has talked about that King of Comedy being such a box office bomb, following right going right into the eighties. But he, but you know, he couldn't get. He they told him, you didn't make another Raging Bull. You didn't do another one of these things, and he lost his eighties was like. One for them, one for me. Yeah, I mean, so know, many, like, so many people's were though. I, no, I but, think of the three as, Heaven, yeah, you know, one, one from the heart, Heaven's Gate, Sorcerer, even a little bit like Apocalypse Now. Just even though it made money, just because of how oh, big of a pain it was, it was a giant pain. You could say like Fitzcarraldo yeah. was probably in there. Yeah, I think I think you can throw, but I mean, I mean New York, Fre- New York, no, New York, New York. Is the uh, film New York? New York, New York is there. You're right. Yeah, that's right. what it was. Yeah. It was in a little King of Comedy, but definitely New York, New York. That was a big, 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 big flop. You know what I mean? And but uh, Friedkin was working uphill, yeah. truly for the rest of his career. Yeah, I mean, but he's was... all, yeah, but he's also on, as we've established in this series, not the easiest to get along with. He's, like he's Francis, a pain. Francis he's a pain. came back around. You know what I mean? And made some made some films. You know what I mean? Like yeah, he. D- did and also he made a lot of money with wine yeah which well, helped he also went back to the to the cellar and was like yeah i'll make a third godfather i guess you know he I mean? made like jack but he did like braun stroker's dracula too and, and like rumble fish i know dracula like, let's 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 call it, let's you know, never mind. we should just do coppola coppola would be good megalopolis can't wait for it it might be awful i have no idea what that is going to be about and it I'm, could be terrible I'm scared. I'm actually scared of Megalopolis. To be fair, I'm terrified. No, I'm serious. I'm terrified of that. Movie. No, I, 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 I agree with you. It could be like this. Could be like a, a legacy killer. Like you know what I mean? Like it not could be a, something. Not a legacy like it could killer. tarnish. Like it could tarnish. So like you're thinking about. It, you're like, damn. You know, like you came back all for this. I, I don't think it could tarnish Coppola for me. I think it could set back cinema. Ooh. that's my worry about it is that yeah i guess that's worse right it's worse i think i think what it could do is it could get all the damn fans that have been out there or i wouldn't say fans but it was all the the fucking negative nancy's out there like stop giving these directors blank checks in their old age and stop giving them movies to make about vanity projects and well the thing is the, 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 no, the, nobody you know, like, nobody the fuck over yourself coppola wrote his own check is the yeah. thing about this movie. So that's I mean, honestly, it's not gonna it kill is the cinema. The blankest check in history. It's not gonna kill cinema because you wanna know why? Except for when Spielberg started his own studio. Well that, but now like, you know, Apple and Netflix are just financing Scorsese well, pictures that's now. True. You know what I mean? But like no, with like Meg- well, if he wrote it what, he like self financed Megalopolis? Yeah, he did it with So his there's no loss money. then on, there's then no loss on the studio's end. So it's not gonna hurt anybody. There's not, but it's the idea oh you're so you're saying like self-financing films at that point it's like uh, auteur oh you know art i don't i don't think that that's going to be the case i think people will i think people will be like jesus i mean i I don't he spent all his own money on this shit i don't that's what i'm more worried about i don't think scorsese will ever get 200 million dollars to make a movie again but i think he's gonna get 200 50 million dollars on his next movie well, when he does jesus movie which is gonna cost like a million and a half no but when he does the wager the other david grand novel Ugh, he's be... gonna want to he's gonna want jack fist to build those fucking ships you know what i mean it's gonna be it's gonna be an expensive movie buddy it'll be interesting but streaming is crumbling it's it's slipping between our fingers yeah but these, stu- what are these studios going to do? Start actually having to give money to directors to make movies, <laughs> like, like it's that worked, very... like that worked out in twenty twenty three. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, the thing is, <laughs> nobody knows what IP to make anymore, except I guess Hunger Games, which I swore was going to be a bomb. And no, there's Hunger only Games there's only like one person that can make it out of the park. No, there's only really one person that can make. Well, I mean, somebody is making their own IP. Technically, Big Jim is making IP his own. Well, thing. Avatar is free money. Yeah. Nolan is free, free money. money. Is Gerwig free money yet? No. I don't she think could so. be. 
Well, she's going to make a Netflix movie next, so she's not for your money. Well, that's true. Well, I mean, that's if that goes through. Tarantino is like free money, free small profit, free or good, like I medium mean, like, profit. It's like a decent profit. Yeah. You know, um, Peel, Peel is Peel, Peel decent, or is he like? How did how did uh, Nope do? It did well, right? But it wasn't received very well. I rewatched Nope. I mean, <sighs> God, what a good movie! I think that is his best movie, hands down. I think so too. It made yeah. you know, sixty eight on a sixty eight budget. It made one seventy two. So nobody's nobody's know, nobody's, no, get, nobody's nobody's getting mad about that. No, nobody's missing their uh, tuition because of that. No, no one's hurting on that. I mean, and mm-hmm. and obviously, Get Out and Us made great chunk of change for him. So mm-hmm. it'd be all right. He's gonna he's making his next movie. It's gonna be like a Christmas horror movie, I think, or something like that. Um, I mean, yeah, there's not many left. But like, and then know, superhero movies are crumbling and dude, yeah, I know. Maybe maybe the mid tier maybe the mid tier budget will come back because that is the interesting thing that may happen is after all of this nonsense. You know what's you know what's funny about good when we stuff talk, might. You know what's funny about just McCon- be what makes money about McConaughey, and it's interesting is we're talking about here at Killer Joe. We should get back on topic. Is mm. The idea of that he refused to go near the rom com and get away from it to become serious and everything. Well, after doing it for a decade. For doing it for a decade and everything. I would make the argument now McConaughey should dip his toe back into the rom com. Well, I mean I think what, what, should, what what's it what's it called? The Sydney Sweeney Glenn Paul, what was that called? Anything uh, but anyone anything but, but you. Anything yeah. but anyone but you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one just like just kept making money. Could I think you the imagine rom-com might be back? Could you imagine if if Anne Hathaway and Matthew McConaughey made a rom com? Oh, see now we're talking. And Nancy Myers got to make it. All right, Nancy, come back. She, I mean, like she didn't get to do the Netflix thing, but like, what if she got to do something else? Like, I'm just saying, like, I think that, I think that if like McConaughey wanted to dip back into it, I think people would be really excited for it. You know what I mean? Like it, him and Kate Hudson did one more rom com, and it was actually good. It was directed by somebody worth a damn. I mean, look at that Brad, that uh, not Brad Pitt, that uh, George Clooney, Julia Roberts movie made a good, decent chunk of change too. You know what I mean? The Ticket to Paradise. You was know? Nancy Meyer supposed to do that? Um, Michael to... Fassbender was it, was he? Yeah, it was like him? wasn't it like fat? No, it was like Owen Wilson. Was it Fassbender? And it was. I'm pretty like, sure Fassbender. Scarlett Johansson. Sorry, think, Scarlett Johansson, it? Penelope Cruz. Right. Yes, I think you're right, Penelope. Cruz. And um, yeah, it was supposed to be Netflix, and they and then Netflix was like, no, no, no. How much was it that she Your asked for? Your like, kitchens are too expensive. She asked for like what, a hundred million dollars? I think it was a hundred million dollars or more. Yeah, she's worth it. She's the most. I mean, that would be. She's made good. the most. I mean, the problem is with Netflix is, uh, I would worry about her making a movie with them because that would maybe have the Netflix like. You know that sheen or shine that they have on their stuff, and no, I mean that's fine. It's just that the 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 streaming model is just crumbling. It's just proving to be unsustainable. It is. Um, would this movie just go so, straight to streaming now, or would A twenty four had to buy it? Like this was Killer like, Joe. Yeah, no, this, like this wouldn't a, go straight to streaming. No, no streaming platform would. This was at this. this was this at be a neon or this was at A24. Venice in twenty eleven, and then it premiered like in July of the next year actually yeah this honestly this honestly is just a movie that doesn't get made now yeah who's gonna make I a think. even though this was only like, i don't know i think 10, neon years ago neon by the shit out of this movie nowadays they might i mean you see uh um, what was the um margaret qualley movie that all took place in a hotel room? sanctuary sanctuary yeah this has some nobody sanctuary talk, vibes to nobody it. talks no this is better than that i thought thank sanctuary was good um I thought it was as good as this. This is more complex. I think this is more complex. I agree. I, I think it's more I complex. Say, and, you know, I think Killer Joe is slightly better than Sanctuary, but I, I, I thought Sanctuary was good, and I thought Margaret Qualley was uh, fantastic in it. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to mention about Killer Joe, Jay? Mm-hmm. You got you got some thoughts, opinions? 
Oh, I mean, there's we've weirdly, I, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting movie to talk about because there's a lot to talk about, but not a lot to talk about it. Um, I mean, like, I mean, the idea of this, and I mean, he only, <laughs> he only owes six thousand dollars. And well, the, that I, is weird. the The amount of money is is fascinating. Where it ends up being like, oh, we're all gonna get, you know, by the end of it, yeah, five 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 thousand dollars, six thousand dollars a pop. Yeah, because they're gonna pay. Okay, so like, he owes six thousand, right? So they all think they all think it will be fifty thousand. Yes, originally. And they owe Joe twenty. They originally think they're going to owe him twenty, but then he says twenty five, and so he goes twenty five. So they're he's going to split that four ways. Chris owes six, but I imagine his share is just going to go straight to that. Or does he get? Does the six get? See, I think it would be clawed this. out, and then they split it four ways. I'm thinking that. I'm thinking that the the twenty five goes to Joe, the six comes out. And the, then they split the, the four, nineteen is the nineteen ish, yeah. But but of course, Joe knows that it's actually a hundred thousand. Well, he finds out that Gina Gershon sure. knows that it's a hundred. Yeah. she's but been she's kind of the mastermind the whole time. Yeah, yeah. which is she's I, hooking up with Rex because she's hooking up with Rex. Uh, and then I assume he kills Rex, right? Uh, yes, that it is implied that he has killed Rex. He kills Rex, which does them no good. Because they have a check that they can't cash. Yeah, so then what? But it's almost like at that point, the money doesn't matter anymore. Oh, that's why he's trying to take the he's trying to collateral. Take the and he's trying yeah. to take Dottie. You know what I mean? And he's like, you know, he's like, I don't, I don't want any of that anymore. I want, I want, your, I want Dottie and I want to be married to her. And be sort of chained to this family. It's like it's, at first she's kind of okay with that, and then at the end of the movie, maybe she kills him, or maybe, maybe she, she doesn't. doesn't. Um, but it's it's replacing one debt with an extremely larger debt, right. and I and it's I find the, I think that that's yeah, really it's all about kind of the you know not respecting another person's humanity, especially a woman's humanity. Well, I think that, but I think it's also from from Chris's perspective. It's just like you knew the dangers of doing all this, but you actually never really took it seriously, and never and never once contemplated the idea that making a deal with the devil means that you have to live with the devil, right? And I think that that's inherently fascinating because, for the most part, Joe's been pretty intimidating. He's been kind of all like smoke, you know what I mean? For the most part. He's been, you know, obviously more intimidating to like Dottie. And then he becomes fire. He becomes absolutely like he becomes a, a full on Molotov cocktail yeah. at the end of this thing. I mean, yeah, the chicken bit is is one thing, but it but when he is attacking Chris, I think is even more unhinged that with the pumpkin pie can. It's really honestly like a, a really great uh unhinged uh, thanksgiving movie that we're talking about here um but um i think that that's and i think what's even more crazy is obviously uh gina gershon like you know egging or you know like just like telling joe to do this but then thomas hayden church grabbing uh emil hirsch's legs and yes that is weird when they all are like yes please do it Beat the hell out of chris yeah what do you think of that i don't know what to think of it um it's it just like he's sort of like the catalyst of all of their pain it's kind is, of like none of this would have happened is it that or is it chris? or is it just like he's now woven them under the dark spell joe in this case he's, or is it just hollow freaking provocation is the other yeah, is it just that at this point the one that's going to actually take care of him is Joe, and the one that is like I guess like what you're trying to say is the one that then has brought them to this destruction is Chris, so, and they don't and they don't have a choice because they know Joe will. I mean, for God's sakes, like 
Gina Gershon's face is is beat to shit, and she's gone through a terrible ordeal, and Ansel has yeah. essentially been rendered speechless, and also is not going to do anything because his wife essentially tried to two, like she two timed him and she crossed him. You know what I mean? And she and she yeah, betrayed they've him. All, they've all turned on each other in different yeah. ways. And so the only one that has control here is the the most menacing figure until Dottie pulls the gun out and. Really the only honest one agency. is Joe, and the only innocent one is Dottie. Yes. So and the rest of them are just sort of moldable figures that float in the wind. Villains yeah. or, you know, probably those are the two things, idiots and or villains. Yeah. And it just kind of, they go into essentially human nature almost maybe on each other like this well, yeah, eating I mean, each, like eating an, each other animal animalistic, animalistic. Not, yeah. not human nature yeah i'm know. sorry more animal uh, nature and start eating each other a lot become survival of the fittest a little bit yeah it really does yeah. become that because they whatever whoever will survive then joe will take care of and then of course dottie's like no no i have the gun and whoever has the gun has the power kurt russell could have played this spectacularly but mcconaughey is so good yeah, i mean it you can't replace McConaughey. No, you can't. He's but McConaughey during this era. He was just a, if he's in the movie, I'm going to see the movie. And I don't even like interstellar that much, but I love interstellar. He's great. in it. I know you do. I love interstellar. I I'm love it for you. I love Wolf of wall street. I love his I love Wolf of wall street. I love mud. I love mud. Mud's Nichols best movie. I agree. Um, uh, I, I love, I love magic. Mike. Magic I love Mike. Magic. Ooh. God damn it. He's so good in that movie when he's like, he should have he, won. That should be his Oscar. He won like Magic the indie Mike. spirit for it. I believe. I think he, 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 that scene where he's not the dance at the end, but the scene where he's like explaining bongos. No, where he's like enticing Alex, uh, Pettifer. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah and he's yeah. like telling them like how to seduce and how to like, and they're like, you know what I mean? And you're talking about where they're in like the, the dance studio, room, the yeah. dance studio. Yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's so fucking good in that moment. It's he's good it's, in all of that movie. Yeah. That movie he's is incredible a, in that movie. That's again, like that movie does not, I love a soda pop. I don't know about you, uh, but that movie is, that movie is on another level than just the stripper movie. If you don't yeah. have McConaughey in that movie, it's, you know, it's, it's, it is yeah. just a stripper movie. If you don't have Man. it in there, otherwise speaking of Soderbergh, I just watched like, I just watched half of Ocean's Eleven the other day. It was oh. the best time I've had. in. was that the back half or the front half front half? I just watched it from the, from the top. God, that's, putting that's the, putting the team together. Is that one of the most rewatchable movies of all time? I think Ocean's Eleven. If you just say, Hey, let's watch a movie and it's like a person that I don't know their movie taste. I'll just put on oceans 11 and I'm confident that they will like it. Can I tell you something? So uh, a lot of the marketing behind Oppenheimer this year Mm -hmm. has been Richard uh, Roper's quote of that. It's the best movie of the century. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I love Oppenheimer to death, but oceans 11 fucking exists in this world. And that is a the best movie of the century. I mean, you know what my best movie of the century is. It's Tree my life? favorite movie of all time. Yeah. Tree life. My favorite movie of all time. What would be mine? Would I be there? Will be blood. Would it be Social Network? It's a good pick. Also would, a good pick. Would I be Lord of the Rings? Would you know, I be that's a pick as well? Don't be like that. Would I be Mulholland Drive? Great pick. I mean, would I be in the mood for love? A great pick as well. I mean, I mo- have a would it be Moonlight? Of life. I mean, great film. You know, Tree of Life is right there. Yeah, it's up there. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of some other stuff. You know, like Killer Joe. Ooh, no, not even close. I would not. Interesting. Even- <laughs> Why'd you give this bad boy? I'm at like a, I'm at a three and a half. I think that's where I put it. Yeah, I think it was at like a too much parallel thinking going on. I, you and I, we need yeah. to do some like controversy. <laughs> we need to do like a Harmony Corinne or something. Just really disagree. Oh, no, because then isn't Harmony Corinne doing that aggro drift movie or whatever? Yeah, sounds awesome. You 
No, that looks like the worst fucking movie. Gotta do on the like, who's the director that you love and I don't? I don't mm. know that does that exist. Linklater. Linklater would be fun because I don't love Linklater as much as you do. I got a lot. I of, like Linklater a lot. I know. Or I like a lot of his movies. And I think that them. if you watched them, though, I think you you know reevaluate. That's the danger. You, you you grow with things and then you grow when we talk about i do them. that's the james cameron thing that you did you grew with cameron you could grow with link later i could grow i i, I i'm sure i would grow with Linklater. you know what you're just doing you weren't you weren't a big fan of him then but you're just linking up with him later okay let's end this episode there you go jay before we get out of here yep you're going to test your award season knowledge based on the film we just reviewed, which is Killer Joe. Okay. In a segment we call, it's an honor to get nominated. Jay, was this movie nominated for any Oscars? It's just interesting that Friedkin had one of the craziest Oscar films of all time. And then uh, later in his career, he just made nothing that would ever get an Oscar nomination. So I'm going to say zero. That is correct. Now, it did have a major nomination on one of the awards um, circuits that year. Okay. Oh boy. All right. I'm guessing and, it would have to be McConaughey. Yeah. Uh, do you know what ceremony? Did this qualify for Indie Spirits? It would be for the, uh, it would be for, you're going to hate this. We talked mm-hmm. about this on the uh on the hunted episode it would be for the, the 20th, aarp it would be for the 2013 for award season for the movies honored in 2012. okay so the 2012 awards yes do you know what ceremony that's what i'm asking i mean i, I said indie spirits is that right? oh did you oh i thought you were saying the aarp awards no the indie spirits is correct okay um he was mcconaughey was nominated for best actor uh, he was nominated opposite um, uh, Thurl uh, Lindhart for Keep the Lights On, sure. Lindo Pierce for Four, Bradley Cooper for Silver Linings Playbook, Jack Black for Bernie, and John Hawks for The Sessions. Do you remember Silver The Sessions? Silver Linings Playbook qualified for the Indie Spirits? Yes. Interesting. Yeah uh john hawks won for the sessions do you remember the sessions i remember it i didn't see it do you know what the sessions is about i couldn't tell you off the top of my head but a man in an iron lung a man in an iron lung who wishes to lose his virginity contacts a professional sex circuit with the help of his therapist and priest okay john hawks helen hunt and william h macy in that movie you seen that one yeah yeah. It's it's fine. Uh it's, it's not very okay. good. Would you have nominated Killer Joe in the best indie feature category? The nominees what, are what was nominated? uh Bernie. Worse than Bernie. Beast of the Southern oh, Bernie Wild. Bernie is like a similar plot to this movie. Very much is. is. Beast of the Southern Wild. Uh I actually like this more than Beast of the Southern Wild. I don't. I don't like Beasts of the Southern Wild. I'm not I'm a not fan. Crazy about Beasts of no. Southern Wild. I need to give it a rewatch. It's been a long, long time. Maybe uh, I changed. Maybe I changed. Maybe I didn't. Who knows? Who gives a shit? Uh, keep the lights on. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Uh, it's a good movie. Yeah. Moonrise Kingdom. I don't like Moonrise Kingdom. I know you That's don't. My hot take. It's my least favorite Wes. It's your least favorite Wes. Yes. When Darjeeling Limited sits right there. I like Darjeeling Limited. Oh. Yeah. I I, I contain multitudes. I will things. say I, Moonrise did move a little bit down for me. You know yeah. what movie was really good last year? Asteroid City. Yeah. Yes. And the winner of course uh was for best feature was uh, uh and also the final nominee was Silver Lines Playbook. I quite like that movie, I will say. I haven't seen it in a long long time. I like De Niro in it. I'm kind of scared to watch it again. <laughs> Why? Because you is it one of those like when you had a really good experience the first go around and you're scared that it did, it's not going to meet up the next go around? Well, yeah. And then I've seen people say some stuff, and I'm like, you know what? I think they're probably right. But what are they? Not said? How I felt the first time. What are they said? 
I don't know. People, a lot of people like find about to be quite insensitive. Really? Oh, because of like Cooper's disability. Yeah, and Jennifer Lawrence as well. But oh, okay. I, I, that movie, I found that movie very, very affecting. I and thought that movie. Was Niro, good. I agree that De-, De Niro was fantastic. I honestly, when it when it came out and I saw it, I was like, "Oh, this is going to win Best Picture." I was like, "That that was going to win," and then it didn't. Um, because there was this little movie called Argo that one yeah. best picture and david russell is my favorite director so <laughs> well you you kept telling me what was that movie that he did was it is it just amsterdam uh is that what it was called it was just amsterdam or new amsterdam just Am- i think it was just amsterdam yeah right it wasn't new it was? amsterdam i don't remember shit it's the one where taylor know. swift gets hit by a bus yeah i haven't seen it um and she dies it's funny I heard it was bad <laughs> I didn't watch it either. It was awful. Um, God damn it. And now I'm trying to remember what the title of that thing was. I think it was just Amsterdam. Yeah, it's just Amsterdam. Yeah. Yeah. He's making he's, his next movie. I'm not looking forward to. I'm I'm very, very, very What's angry. That? What's he doing next? Uh, supposedly, he is attached to be the director for the Selena Gomez, uh, Linda Ronstadt movie. Sounds great. Can't wait. I saw your face there. That did not look like a face that was interested in seeing that. That's my favorite director. I don't think you should keep saying that because people. He's made the 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 horrible thing is he's made some good movies. Yeah, but he's also just a. I know he seems like a true true bad man. Silver Lines Playbook is not my favorite film from him though. No, I'm more I'm more of a Three Kings. Three Kings. The Fighter. I like the Fighter. The Fighter's good. Amy Adams is phenomenal in that. Bale's really good in that movie. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm honestly surprised Christian Bale has not had another run or crack at the Oscars. I feel like he's gonna. I think he's gonna have one more in him, and they're gonna. I I agree. He feels like that kind of. You know what I mean? Like that kind of actor where he's so people respect the shit out of Christian Bale. He's also, a, he works. He 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 has very like aerobic performances where you're like this guy was trying really hard he's very daniel day lewis not that he not that he is daniel day lewis i'm not i'm not saying he's daniel day lewis light i mean i think that's fair to say like he is he transforms he likes to get into the to the meat he likes to gain and lose weight very much he likes to he doesn't mind looking ugly which i think some of these stars don't want to do you know i mean mean, russell crowe has just decided to gain weight (laughs) well he's got a lot of exorcisms to perform Remember, uh, what was the movie where he was in the car? What are you talking about? The one the where he's movie. mad in the car. He's mad in the car? Called Unhinged. Unhinged? Yeah, that movie rules. You fucking love that movie. The movie rules. The movie was like made for every Karen in the world out there. Dude. He's got road um, rage. Yeah, he's got, yeah. They should have called it road rage. That would have been better. Uh, that's uh, actually a better title. That's a better. Yeah, I know it is because I said it. Um, but uh, yeah, Unhinged just sounds like. Literally, unhidden sounds like what a quote from a uh, from Jay Ledbetter on the poster would be like. Jay Ledbetter on Awards Watch calls this unhinged. Jay Ledbetter road, calls ro- calls road rage unhinged. unhinged. Yeah, that's right. Doesn't that that's sound true. that sounds better? Yeah, but you can't I get would, more. I the, would get an. I would have been on the FYC for road rage. Yeah, not unhinged though. Not Damn. unhinged. But I will say. Pope's Exorcist. Did you watch that? Yeah, just just it, it, fun garbage. It's fun, fun. It's not even yeah. trash. It's garbage. No, it's garbage, but it's yeah. fun garbage. We it was like, I think it's on like Netflix, and we watched it one night, I, and it's it's super silly and stupid. But it's, it's I like it when he rides on the little Vespa. I like it when like the Pope is like like doing john wick stuff oh you it's, are my exorcist you are my you are my exorcist then we must now we have to really chase after the ghosts of satan afterwards. russell crow fascinating career he's like in a weird kind of mcconaughey era where it's like he's in a nomad land sort of situation he is i i don't even know what to say about russell crow at this point well, didn't he want to like get back into Gladiator too by being like a fucking ghost or something like that? Like well, he, he, have he to was, lose a, he have to lose a lot of weight. Yeah, man, <laughs> they they really let himself go on the other side. You know what I mean? Yep. Like it's, I don't know. I love him though. I saw him in uh, what was the what was the movie with um, 
Um, Shit. son was gay. Oh boy, boy erased. erased. Yeah, <laughs> son was gay. <laughs> he was. He was. He well, was an absolute the... unit in that movie. <laughs> that movie was good. It's movie fine. Was fine. Yeah, Ed- Edgerton's a good, pretty good director. Edgerton is. Uh, yeah, Edgerton's got. He's, he's got, got an some, eye. He's got some stuff. I wish he would do more. I wish he would do more um, films. Like Did he direct like, that. Um, the, the movie with, with him and Bateman. Yeah the the guest the gift the gift the, that's what it is yeah. the gift yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. movie was was pretty good that movie's fucking wild like talk yeah. about it like a, yeah he also wrote uh, he co-wrote with David Michaud I believe the 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 um the King that Chalamet movie oh yeah the movie was uh okay that movie was, that movie was good for what it Pattinson, was Pattinson great in it oh my god when is Robert Pattinson not great that's a good question and the answer is never. I can't wait for Mickey 17. Good. Yeah. Him and Bong? Bong. Yeah. You Seems like bong. a match made in heaven. Seems like a guy we got to talk about one day. Yeah. Yeah, do Bong. Jay. Yes. Tell everybody where they can find you and all your work. You can find me on Letterboxd. Just search Jay Ledbetter. Find me on Twitter at Mr. Jay Ledbetter. Find any writing I may or may not do or any podcasting I may or may not do just on uh, awardswatch.com recommendation of the week ryan i'm on my i'm on my 90, 80s 90s trash kick Uh-oh. seen hard target hard target which one's hard target john claude van damme i don't think i have dude you gotta watch hard target john woo directed by john woo you gotta put a list together for me this is a truly remarkable action film um have you seen that meme where Jean Claude Van Damme punches a snake? <laughs> I don't think I've seen that. No, that's from this movie. It is. Uh, I mean, it, honestly, like it is complete trash, but also the action in it is pretty immaculate. Um, hard target. I would put as like top tier of these types of movies that I'm watching right now. Okay. Um, I, I would say absolutely watch hard target. Jean Claude Van Damme. Is doing like a little bit of a Cajun accent. It's absolutely horrible, um, but that almost makes it more endearing. He's wearing a mullet, which looks terrible, makes it more endearing. Uh, they've got an absolute uh, '90s babe in it uh, for him to. And credit to the movie, the one time it looks like they're about to hook up, he grabs a snake from behind her head instead of kissing her, uh, and that's uh, good stuff. It's. <laughs> It's got some truly incredible moments, some great action. John Woo finds ways to put pigeons uh, and doves in the movie, despite the fact that it takes place in New Orleans. Uh, it's uh, I really had a fantastic time with Hard Target. So uh, watch watch Hard Target. Did you watch it with the wife? No, I watched this one solo. Hmm. You should... I want to get like Allie's reaction to these trash. Actually, yeah i need to watch i need to watch a couple with her I'll, I'll i'll report back thank you thank you very much um i i rewatched a movie that i hadn't seen in like 10 uh 10 years i guess and it, it, i know for a fact listeners that jay ledbetter has seen this it was one of his favorite films of the last decade i pulled it off the shelf absolutely love this movie he loves it too it's olivier asias's uh clouds of sils maria oh one of the greats one of the great movies i just i was in the mood to watch something i haven't seen that in a while talky and familiar and just the just i mean talk about these these people talking about uh someone's career and the past and in the industry and art and life and it's done by check the notes uh julia binoche and Kristen stewart not a bad tandem. Not a bad tandem at all. It's a fucking brilliant movie. I loved it. It's so, it's so wickedly funny, too. Yeah. In a lot of ways, is a clever guy. He's a clever. Guy. I love him. I love him as a director. He is, he is a. He's got a new movie coming out. Uh, I think it came out of, uh, like it comes out later this year or something. Um, it's like it. Unfortunately, it's like a COVID movie. But did he? Um, um, did he direct Madame Web? <laughs> 
again, way to timestamp this fucking thing. That oh, that wasn't him. Sorry. No, sorry, that sorry. wasn't him. This is different, different Asayas. Um, uh, At the God. time of this recording, Madam Web has not come out. I think Madam Web, I predict it might be the worst movie ever made. Have you seen it? No. No, just you're, just, you're just predicting? Okay. Yeah. I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> I think all these movies that Sony has created outside of the Mar there were collaborations with Marvel with the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. I never and saw um Horrid. Morbius. Morbius. That thing looked terrible. I wasn't going to watch it even You didn't you see it? You couldn't pay me to watch something with Jared Leto in it. I might watch it. I might watch Morbius before Madam Web. Just have a little Spidey verse a thought. I want to watch Madam Web just because my girls are in it. Dakota and Sydney? Absolutely. I love them. They're very important to me. They're very um, important people. I they're agree. my friend. They're my friends. I love them. I got to support them. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You know what I mean? They're caught in their web. I, hey, those are far worse webs to be caught in. Also, my boy uh, um, uh, Adam Scott's in it too. Uh, that's right. I love Adam Scott. He's a good guy. Hang on. We hang out all the time, evidently. Uh, to this bit, uh, you can uh, find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterbox at Ryan McQuay seven seventy seven. Jesus, I can't speak. Uh, you can uh, follow all my work here at awardswatch dot com. If you like podcasts, you can go over and listen to the main show. They, that is released every Monday, as we're released every Thursday. Um, iTunes, Spotify, five stars. If you don't give us five stars, five stars only. Five stars only. It's a five star club. Otherwise, you're not invited. You know, we want we want five stars. I don't I don't know how hard this is. I love a five star. You know what? It's coming. My birthday's coming up. I'd love five star reviews. And tell us what you love. Point. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't want to break my heart now, would you? Or Jay's heart? No. I mean, I it. mean, I mean, don't don't break Jay's heart. He's my he's don't my do boy. it, folks. I love Jay. I'm a don't sensitive man. He's a very sensitive man. It's hard enough to get him on these shows, and you don't want to break his heart? Come on now. A little bit better than that. Be better. Um, newsletter, go sign up for that over at awardswatch.com. We release that twice a week. It's where you can get all of our reviews, interviews, news, podcasts, all in one thing sent to you. A couple of cool announcements in there every now and then. It's cool stuff. You should go do it. Eric puts a lot of time and attention into it, and we greatly appreciate it. Next week. We are going to be back to wrap up our William Franken movie oh series gosh. with the last film from the master, the K mutiny court martial that came out last year. So until then, thank you all so much for listening and we will see you all next time.